Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. Over the last week, two weeks, I've started getting more requests for uh, VPN and remote access videos. So I am going to show you how to use your Synology 20, RT2600AC or your MR2200AC as a VPN concentrator. Uh, you, if you have one of these devices, you already have everything you need. You may need more licenses, but Synology makes those licenses super cheap, $9.99 a piece. You can have up to 20 concurrent connections on this. So this is the one that we're going to use. We're going to set everything up from, uh, from you know, start to finish. I, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, I wanted to get this video out. If you do need consulting and assistance uh, in doing this, you can reach out down at willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form and, and we'll be in touch. We want to get this uh, out. Once again, thank you everybody for being here. Um, make sure you subscribe, click like, do all the follows and all that good stuff. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get over to the computer and take a look. All right, so here we go. We're going to move kind of quick through this. If you've watched my other Synology router videos, you should have a good idea how the base setup on this is going to go. I'll explain each step. We will disable the Wi-Fi. So by default, we have our router, the WAN port plugged into the internet, and then we have this machine plugged into one of the LAN ports and we've got an IP address and so by default the box the uh, Synology box is going to hand out 192.168.1 addresses and that's okay you can change that to match your network if you have to now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this we're going to click the start button once an administrator account so we're going to do all these things that at once and of course, everybody's read the EULA. And it wants us to set up a Wi-Fi network. And it actually won't let us get past that. We're going to disable it. So we're just going to put in test here. And your WPA2 passphrase has to be eight characters. So we'll do test, test. Like I said, we are going to disable it anyway. I'm going to leave external access to the SRM disabled. I don't want that open to the internet directly. So I'm going to leave this the way it is. Our other option here would be AP, but we want it to be a router. Our uh, internet connection is going to be DHCP or auto IP, so we're going to leave that the way it is. We're going to click apply. It says it's going to take three minutes to reconfigure, so we are going to let it do its thing, and we will uh, be right back. All right, so we could add Wi-Fi points, which is really Synology's wireless access point management system when you're doing mesh points. Uh, we're not dealing with that now, so we're just going to click Start Managing Now. It's going to go ahead and log us in. We already created our admin account. We're going to fly right through the intro here. Click OK. Now, uh, here's a vendor who actually asks us whether we want to be involved with the analytics. For now, I'm going to click no thanks, but if you want to send Synology those analytics, feel free to do that. And then here, I'm going to put uh, don't show this again. Now, I am running the latest version of SRM, and you should make sure that you're always um, on the latest version of SRM as well. So you can go into control panel and system. And it's going to go out and it's going to check and see if you are on the latest version. So you can see here, it says our SRM version is up to date. The very first thing I want to do, so I don't forget, is I'm going to go to this Wi-Fi Connect. And I'm actually going to disable the Wi-Fi. And then I'll make sure that the guest network is disabled because I'm not using this for Wi-Fi. I'm only using it for uh, VPN. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change these SRM settings here and I'm going to automatically redirect HTTP to HTTPS and I'm going to enable HSTS and we're going to click OK. So it's going to, it's going to enable HTTPS and um, then reload anything on port 8000 to automatically go over HTTPS to port 8001. We always want to encrypt all the things that we can. So you're going to be able to use a free dynamic DNS with this and also uh, you're going to be able to leverage Let's Encrypt certificates and we're going to get to that in just a minute. 
So it takes just a few seconds for the web server to restart. You can see it's applying the network settings now. And you can do all kinds of other things with this router. Uh, you can turn it into a light uh, NAS. Uh, it can have a 4G, 5G uh, dongle on it and it can do failover. It can do all kinds of things. It's got uh, probably the best parental control uh, feature set of any router out there today is built into this Synology box. I, I think that that is uh, absolutely amazing. So as soon as this is done, we are going to get right into the swing of things. It didn't redirect us, so we'll just take care of this for it. And get the good old certificate error here. So we'll go ahead and we'll log back in. So Wi-Fi is disabled. Web browser is doing HTTPS. So we'll go back here. Now you can bind this to Active Directory and give Active Directory users to the uh, VPN that you're going to see us set up. You can also do LDAP and you can also enforce two-step verification. And I do recommend that you enable this um, when you're using the service if you're going to have uh, web-based services available um, or especially if you're going to open SRM to the outside world make sure that you've got this enabled so that administrators have to uh, use this at a minimum. So we should be okay here of course you can set up all of your notifications and all those things and you will have to set up email in order for two-factor authentication to work so you'll have to go through all of that. All right so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hop over to our network center and we're going to go over to our internet tab we're going to go over here to quick connect and ddns and i am going to use the synology uh, ddns and if you also want to manage this remotely and you're not going to expose the port uh, the management port to the internet you would want to use a uh, quick connect here so you could configure that i'm just going to use the synology and I'm just going to call this a W How Lab. I'm going to request a certificate. I'm agreeing. Now it's going to come up and it's going to prompt me to log into my Synology account. So I will do that. And it's going to prompt me for 2FA, which is fantastic. You should always use 2FA. Uh, when you are able to see if I can beat the buzzer here oh it's gonna be wrong it's gonna pop back maybe maybe not it's taking long enough so we probably got we probably got in right under the wire on that um, but there's a p possibility that the cert will fail here it happens occasionally if it fails that's fine we'll go ahead and uh, issue that manually it'll actually tell you that you need to, to issue it manually if that happens um, so we talked about in the intro to this video the licenses for this um, it does enable concurrent connections they are like nine dollars and 99 cents a piece can be purchased instantly right through the router Oh look, it's restarting the web server, so it must have, um, it must have worked. So let's try hwhowlab.synology.me8001, and there we go. Got the little padlock. Life is good, right? If we can remember usernames and passwords. Now, uh, the Synology will work in all types of network configurations. I have it running in uh, networks that have multiple VLANs. We've got it in very simple networks. So it will work in a multitude of networks. So just remember that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hop over here to Package Center. And of course, we have read all the things. And we are going to install the VPN Plus server. 
and I'm trying to think while that's installing if there's anything else we need to do. If there's any other questions you've got, you can always look at my other video um, just to see, kind of get those answered. So here it's going to confirm that we want to do the installation and we're going to go ahead and apply this and it is going to install VPN Plus. VPN Plus is fantastic and they do give you one license for free. Like I said, if you do buy licenses, you get the licenses. It's a one shot, one kill, $9.99 per license, and you have it for the life of the device. So it's it's a heck of a deal, especially when you see everything that the VPN Plus, or VPN Plus server can actually do. And we'll get into some of the uh, some of the setup on that. Some of it you're going to see is the same as the Synology NAS but some of it is very specific to this device. And I keep telling my contacts over at Synology that they need to take this Synology router manager, put it in a 1U box. Uh, all right, so right now it says the following applications are blocked by the firewall. We want to go ahead and open this because we're going to use all of these different uh, VPNs. So we'll say OK. So I keep telling them they need to put this in a 1U box with an Intel Xeon 16 gigs of RAM, put some inner VLAN routing on it, and they would they would absolutely blow the doors off everybody else. We're not going to use safe access. Uh, make sure your packages are up to date, but we're not going to deal with this right now, so I'm not going to take the time to update that at the moment. So now we've got our VPN Plus server installed. So let's open up VPN Plus server and take a look around here so first of all you've got this very nice uh, network traffic overview very very beautiful beautiful all right so before we come back to the Synology uh, VPN let's take a look at the standard VPN so three of these you are actually familiar with if you use a Synology NAS for your VPN and that would be the PPTP which I know vendors are supporting it but don't use it we don't don't I mean, it's like um, if it's like the very last VPN thing that I had to use, I suppose I would, but it's got challenges and issues and has been deemed not secure. So we don't use that, but vendors are still supporting it. Synology is not the only one. There's a lot of vendors that still support it. You got your L2 TP IPsec. You've got your Open VPN. You've got SSTP, and you can see if you're using SSTP, you have to um, use one of those uh, licenses. So you have the option to do this. We've also got site-to-site -site, uh, VPN, but we don't have any licenses for that. Uh, it, once again, it's a very inexpensive license, and you have it for the life of the device. Uh, down here is where we give users access to the different types of VPNs. Now, if this is bound to Active Directory and LDAP, you can use groups to um, assign those permissions. We can speed limit users. We can blo uh, block list IPs. And then uh, this gives us a summary of our permissions. Here is where we define um, network um, objects. So if we add an object here, you can see IP range and subnet, and this comes into uh, play when you start looking at uh, permissions and split tunneling on VPNs. Here we've got uh, connections, so history, online. You also have a web VPN monitor, so it has full monitoring and accountability. Here's your log file, so management log, user log, and of course log settings. We've got our beautiful bar charts and pie charts that everybody loves here. Here's a summary of our license. Now, if you're going to buy more licenses, this is where you can do it. So you can actually click Add License. Now it's going to uh, load into the into your Synology account. So I'm going to log in. Now I'm not going to buy uh, a license at the moment for this router. It's going to come up. It's going to say Quantity 1. I can buy all the way to 19 for this because this box uh, supports 20 concurrent sessions and it comes with one free one so I can do 19. So you can see if I max this box out it's going to cost me $189.81. You can also manually activate existing license keys so 
it looks like if this device dies, I own this, I can possibly uh, transfer these to another router. So that's fantastic. But once you walk through this and you pay, it is instantly activated. So it's very slick. All right, so back to the Synology VPN. Now, the SSL VPN loads right through a web browser. And so we'll go ahead and we'll enable that. Now, we can enable split tunneling, and that split tunneling uses these objects. So we would define networks that are inside of our, and I'll just enable it and show you. So we would uh, tell the VPN what objects that are available to us we're going to send through the VPN. Everything else goes through the end user's internet traffic or to their local network. So that's what split tunneling does. It splits the traffic that's destined for the VPN versus destined for um, destined for going across into the VPN for the remote network. So I'm going to uh, disable that. So we'll leave this uh, going, and you'll see by default it's going to use um, port 443, which is absolutely fine. And then as soon as this applies, we're going to move over here to the remote desktop, and I'm going to show you this. So we're going to enable this, but you're, you notice that it, it has a different port here. And you can disallow duplicate logins. You can allow users to save credentials. And you'll notice that all of these, though, told us that we needed to have um, SSL certificates installed. And we've already got that one. Here's the web VPN. Now, it wants to use the uh, port 443 as well. And the web VPN does make you give a different URL. And then here we would have to import a wildcard uh, certificate or at least a certificate that also supports login.whowlab.synology.me. So if you need web VPN, this is something that you can absolutely uh, take a look at. And then you can uh, build the portals here. And then here you can specify your domain for your box. So if you're using your own FQDN or uh, your own T, uh, yeah, your own FQDN, you could specify that here, at least the root. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply all these settings real quick. Oh, and it gives us this warning. If you set the same port for the SSL VPN and web VPN, it may affect the general speed of the web VPN. So no, I don't want to continue on that. So web VPN will make uh, like uh, 4443. We'll go ahead and apply that. So we're now enabling the remote desktop and we are now also um, enabling the web VPN. So once we get these enabled, we'll take a look at, at how it works. And, you know, this, when you actually have one of these and you're actually deploying it, you can do it much quicker. Um, there's not, you know, there's not me there talking to you, so you can kind of concentrate on what you got going on. So web web VPN portals, we can add a portal. So it's the portal name, the portal address, the allowed users, show and default portals, and you can also then create a customized portal alias to go right to this. So what is that? This is like a uh, reverse proxy. So um, if you've got internal websites that you want, um, and here I'll add one just for, for kicks and giggles. So this laptop's the only thing um, that is, is plugged in. Um, let's see, portal address. And then allowed users here. You would select this, I'm gonna allow my uh, user and then we can also show it in everybody's default portal so we'll click OK on that and now you're gonna see portal address and um, just this general option allow users to connect to web resources via the address bar all users so you can get into some kind of custom you know things on this and so we've got all these things enabled so why don't we um, go ahead and log out of the admin interface. And what we're going to do then is we're just going to strip 
this off and we're going to connect directly to the uh, router and you can see now it is uh, automatically re redirected over to login. Uh, whowlab.synology.me. I'm going to go ahead and put my username and password in. But if you've been paying attention, you'll know that we forgot to do something pretty important. And that was to give my user access to all of the things. So we're going to have to hop back over real quick. Uh, let's see if we can just do this through another, uh, another tab. So we'll copy this. We'll get logged in here. Oh, it's because it's the wrong FQDN. Some of you were yelling at your screen, and I appreciate that. And this thing, you know, every time there's a release that comes out for this router, the customization and things like that just get better and better and better. So we're going to go to Control Panel. We are going to go to WHOW. I'm sorry. Wrong spot for that. We are going to go to VPN Plus Server, and then we're going to go to Permissions, and then under WHOW, we're going to give my user, uh, we'll just give my user access to everything. It hurt me to click on that PPTP, but um, we'll go back to that. So now let's just see if I can refresh and if I get all the things just by refreshing. So I did. I'm going to go ahead and log out of this. And now for your users to install uh, the web VPN. So web VPN is going to give you a couple different options. You can see that uh, portal redirection that I created is there. And if there was something there, I could launch that and it would do it automatically. But you can see that this doesn't actually exist um, in, inside. I just added that as an example. So then you could also put in other URLs. So if you have an intranet or something like that that's inside, users can connect to this and then just input that internal URL and click connect and it will connect to those inside services. The SSL VPN, uh, they do have clients for Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. And so it tells you that you need to download the client and then click here to add a security exception for Firefox. So I'm going to download the client. You do have to be an administrator to install this software, but we're going to download it and we're going to run it. I just want you to see what the install looks like. So we're going to say OK on that. And we're going to walk through this. And here in a second, we're probably going to get that UAC prompt. But you can, you'll notice that this is much different than OpenVPN. You're not having to install the client, put the certificate on there. And things like that and I have been testing this and I guarantee you that this works um, so it's going to install the client and then it's going to redirect us here in the web browser to actually connect to it just got to be patient sometimes these installs take a little bit longer than um, than what you think they're going to but as long as the little green bar keeps moving, we are making progress. Here's an interesting side note for you, too. Uh, I am now a Synology uh, partner, and I did verify with Synology that if you buy from Amazon, you still get the full Synology warranty. So that's good. All right, so our SSL VPN client setup is done, so we're going to click Finish on that. And then we're going to add our security exception. Apparently we are, it's doing something, not 100% sure. Certificate was installed, so we will proceed. And so now if we go back to the SSL VPN, um, we need to make up a PIN code. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's got to be at least 8 characters. And we'll say OK. And we can auto-connect when we log into this. We're not going to do that. But we can reconnect when the VPN connection is lost. And we can keep the SSL VPN connections alive even when we close the web browser. I'm not going to select that, but uh, we will go ahead and click connect. And so now um, my machine is going to, I don't know if we're going to cause a big meltdown here, but uh, we, are, we are connected. And you can see Windows said, hey, 
There's a new there's a new network connection. What do you want to do with this? And I'm just going to say no to that. And let's um, let's open up a command prompt and let's see if it shows us an adapter. I'm not sure if it does or not since it's all. Yep, it does right here. Ethernet adapter VPN. So there it is, 172.21.0.153. So that was pretty stinking easy. So everything is done right through the web browser there. Once again, your web VPN is going to give you that reverse proxy into your network. SSL VPN is going to give you client-based VPN. And then remote desktop, what we've been doing is we've been walking users through this. And so you obviously have to have remote desktop enabled or check this out. So we can create this remote connection and we're just going to call this, you know, Willy connection. And you get a few choices with this, right? So you can do Microsoft Remote Desktop, you can do Apple Remote Desktop, or you can do Custom. So the Apple Remote Desktop is actually VNC. And of course, here's Microsoft RDP. But if you do Custom, what you can do is you can then put in the remote address and then depending on how you've got your VNC um, configured, you know, if it's not 5900, if it's 5901 or 5902 or whatever, you can customize that which is pretty uh, pretty slick. Now RDP we would put in either the FQDN or the IP address, so FQDN or IP. So just for, for grins we would do you know like uh, 55 or you know say that's our server. I've been setting the quality to medium and then here you can set the resolution. I never enable the audio um, but you could also do full screen mode. You click apply here and now the user has their um, you know has this configured what I don't know yet because we've we've really just started launching this is that if I can log in as an admin and see everybody's remote desktop connections I'm not hundred uh, percent sure on that but if you can't it's no big deal because it's so easy for the end user to do this all you have to do is tell them to give it a name and give them the remote address set the quality to medium or you can use your remote control software remote into their machine and set this up so uh, we've been deploying uh, this a lot and I expect expect over the next few weeks to deploy quite a few more of these so if you've got any questions make sure you leave them down in the comments all right and that is it for the router setup Synology VPN server plus you can see it's pretty powerful. If you need help with that, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form. You know, thank you for being here. If you need any assistance, let us know. Um, all of our links are down below. There are Amazon affiliate links to these devices down below. Um, if you need help, reach out at willyhow.com, hit that like button, uh, subscribe, follow on Twitter and Instagram, all that good stuff. Everybody be healthy, be safe, and if you need help, please reach out. I'm Willie, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.